Today, there are many challenges to democracy. I won't diagnose them all. However, there are a couple of parting suggestions. You can be both robust and civil at the same time. If this House regularly demonstrates poor behaviour, it diminishes members and dilutes public respect. In a valedictory that became a prophecy, outgoing and well-respected Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tony Smith, members on my left. directly connected the public's disgust with what it sees happening in Parliament with voters' desertion of the major parties and the rise of independence. The major parties need to consider how to address this. The election has delivered the biggest challenge to the two-party system that has been entrenched since 1910. The 47th Parliament is notable for a huge crossbench, comprising a diverse group of long-standing rural independents, new independents largely from the inner cities, and a record number of Greens. Many are seeking to reform the way this Parliament will run in practice, both to improve its tone and to respect the critical mass of this third force in the Chamber. I think as a priority we need to bring back the trust in government but trust in our parliamentary system and actually have a chamber that works where you see robust debate. Anthony Albanese. The new Prime Minister has insisted he has heard voters demand for a better parliament. We need to change the way that politics operates in this country. We need to be more inclusive. We can do that uh, in this parliament. The independents have something of a unity ticket on the things they want to see change in the parliament. The man who they have to win over is Tony Burke, the government's new leader of the House, responsible for the daily running of the parliament. The most important thing is to have a government that respects the parliament. There's always going to be some combat, but where the purpose of it became combat and nothing else, sledging and nothing more, a government that has a different approach to that is of itself a radical shift from what we've been dealing with for the last three years. But while Burke is prepared to talk about changing the vibe of the thing, there are clearly limits. Question time is the part of the House of Representatives day that the public would be most familiar with. The independents want to be able to ask more questions and an end to the infamous Dorothy Dixer. The question from a government backbencher inviting a minister to say how good the government is and how terrible the opposition is. Will the Prime Minister outline how the Morrison government has demonstrated in this parliament that it is on the side of the Australian people? Have there been any alternative approaches on display? It's a pretense of a debate. There's no real mechanism whereby we can pull up the Prime Minister and uh, the Minister in question to actually answer a question. So one suggestion is actually that there be a follow-up question allowed with a limited amount of time for response. Now that there's 16 crossbenchers, we'll need uh, a lot more than one question in question time uh, if the parliament is to be run uh, in a fair way. And I tell you what, history shows that the crossbenchers are the people that ask the straightest questions. There is nothing wrong, I don't believe, with a government using the one time of the day that every member of parliament's in the room to explain some of the things that the government's doing. The more important part of what the House of Representatives does, however, is that it passes laws which dictate the way we are governed. Governments with big majorities usually get legislation through the House without any significant debate. So it has become the practice and habit for the really substantial debates and amendments on our laws to take place in the Senate. But both the government and the crossbench agree there should be a return to more substantive discussion and amendments in the House. Yet unfortunately, the, the really detailed debate on legislation occurs in what is called the third reading stage, in which individual clauses and amendments to them are discussed. To give you an example, Laura, in the last parliament, I moved an amendment for the Environmental Protection Biodiversity and, uh, Act, and the government used its numbers to gag debate, suspend procedure, skip the consideration in detail stage, and go straight to a final vote. It should be absolutely rare for legislation to be rushed through and I'm actively trying to work through different ways at the moment that we can give people the opportunity who want to speak on bills to be able to do so. Tony Burke says that in the previous parliament, ministers often didn't introduce their own legislation and weren't present in debates over amendments, and that must change. If you're bringing a piece of legislation to the parliament as a minister, that's a big deal. You're trying to change the law 
of Australia. Then there is the question of how MPs who aren't members of the government can change Australia's laws. The independents want more time allocated to such legislation, so-called private members' business, and a better process for getting it put on the agenda. That currently requires an absolute majority. Does not wish this meant to that during the pandemic, a vote to bring on independent MP Helen Haynes' bill for a federal anti-corruption commission was defeated, even though it had majority support on the floor of the House, because some MPs weren't present in the chamber. If we've got a matter to decide, let's just see who can get a simple majority and we'll decide it. This is one that I want to meet with them and, and have a talk to them about it and how to, to work it through. If we can find a constructive way of elevating some of the private members' business and private members' motions, then I'm really open to that conversation. The real sticking point, though, is likely to be the rules of the House. The independents want changes to those formal rules, known as the standing orders, which doesn't seem to accord with Tony Burke's argument that many of the changes they want can be done within existing rules. The question will be, what will uh, Prime Minister Albanese be prepared to put in on black and white, in paper, uh, to ensure we actually have better procedure. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone pr can pretend that you can do a standing orders change that'll, that'll fix that. Mr Speaker, you. Oh, there he goes. Talk about his seat. Prime Minister is in seat. We are not trying to turn the House of Representatives into a polite dinner party. It will have a cut and thrust, and I'm not troubled by that. What I want to make sure of is that there are arguments about issues. Good government shouldn't be simply about the numbers. Uh, if we have a problem with our parliament, and we do, then a good government will address those problems, will fix them, will bring about positive changes. So there's a, an obligation on the new government to do just that. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.